Welcome everyone to our X4 Foundations Guide to Getting Started. X4 Foundations is a huge space sandbox that gives you the option to do anything from explore, build, fight, and trade. There are so many options that really from the very beginning, if you're not familiar with the X series, it's very easy to get lost with all of the opportunities. So in this particular video, we're going to focus on some different ways to get you started. How do you make some money? Where can you go? And what are some of the things that you can do? But actually, before we get into the game itself, there's a couple of things I want to point out under the settings. So let's go ahead and click on the settings and then go under game settings. First is auto roll. Auto roll by, the, by default is on and you can see I've left it on for right now. And this sort of creates an artificial horizon, an artificial uh, sort of up and down, left and right in the game. And it will try to keep your ship oriented to that axis as much as possible. So if you get into the game and you find that as you try to roll left or roll right, and you find that the computer AI is automatically uh, adjusting the pitch or the roll of your ship that's why it's the auto roll that's on so come in simply turn that off and you should be quite a bit better the second is maintain speed in menus by default this is off and i'm not sure why it's off what this pertains to is as you're traveling you're going to spend a lot of time traveling from point a to point b in this game and, the, and sometimes it can take several minutes to get there so one of the good options that you have during that time is to simply open up your menus, check on your AI, see how your traders or miners and so on are doing, and also just get a general status of where your money is and so on. Well, by default, as soon as you pull up a menu while you're traveling, the ship is going to stop. So you want to turn, make sure that you turn this one on uh, so that your ship will maintain its speed while you're in the menus. So with that in mind, now let's move on to a new game. For our purposes today, we're going to be using the Young Gun Start simply because that's the default for most people. So let's get started. All right, now that we've spawned in game, before we hop into our starter ship and go about exploring the galaxy, there are a few things that I recommend you do here in the station while you're docked before you get going. And the first involves the dock interactions, which by default for me is the enter key so i'm going to press that now another option to get to the dock interactions tab is to use the map key which is m by default for me that'll bring you into uh, the map menu and you can simply choose the different tabs across the top so either one of those will work and let's begin by taking a quick look inside here you notice that buy ships is grayed out but upgrade repair docked ships is not and the reason for that is if you want to upgrade or repair a ship then you must be at either an equipment dock a shipyard or a wharf and if you're not familiar with the term a wharf is simply a shipyard that only produces small to medium ships as opposed to the shipyards that produce large or extra large ships such as capital ships and construction vessels so that's the stipulation there, uh, the difference between those two. So we're not at a shipyard or a wharf, so we cannot buy any new ships, but we can upgrade or repair. So if you've been in a fight and you need to repair your, your hull, this is the place to do it. Look for an equipment dock, a wharf, or a shipyard. But for right now, what we want to do is go under upgrade or repair for a different purpose. Now, you've got plenty of options for things to upgrade. Basically, everything about your ship from engines, thrusters, shield generators, weapons, turrets, software. But what we're most interested in right now are consumables. If we click on the consumables tab, you can see we have three consumables on board. We have resource probes, nav beacons, and satellites. These are all three very helpful as you progress through the game. But here at the very beginning, there are two of these that I immediately get rid of. So we're going to sell off the resource probes and the nav beacons. Now you could certainly sell off the satellites as well uh, to earn that money. But I choose to keep the satellites at the beginning of a game simply because satellites are your way of, if you drop one of these satellites, deploy one uh, close to a station, it will continually refresh 
the uh, trade offers and keep them from going out of date and expiring. So I find these to be, of the three, the most useful at the very beginning of the game. But as I mentioned, you are certainly welcome uh, to sell off these five as well. So we've, we've done everything we want to do on the left-hand side under consumables. So we look on the right-hand side, and you can actually see we're going to come out of here with a profit of very nearly 40,000 credits. But we're not quite done in here yet. Next, I want to come into the software tab, and we're actually going to purchase a, a couple of upgrades. Starting at the very top with docking software. Docking at the very beginning of the game until you get used to it is a very tedious task and very hard to get right because you not only have to have the pitch of the ship correct, you also have to have it in the light, right location, uh, left or right. So a docking computer will help you with that. It simply expands the available area uh, to where the computer will take over and basically give you a larger margin for error. So we're going to purchase the basic MK1 upgrade. Uh, the MK2 upgrade would give you an even wider uh, area to work with, but it's a good bit more money, and I'm not really interested in spending that kind of money, particularly early on in the game. The other piece of software I want to pick up is the trading software. This will help us out with our trade offers and keeping them uh, updated and visible for us. So these are the two pieces that I want to make sure we get. The long range scanning software is also very good as it will improve the results you get from your long range scanning, which by default is shift and three. So keep that in mind. This is a very good upgrade long term, as well as some of the other upgrades from engines, weapons, and so on. But for right now, these are the upgrades I want to make. We want to sell the consumables and then we want to purchase a docking computer and a trading computer extension. So now we're going to come over to the right hand side and just like when you're shopping online, you have to add things to your shopping cart. So we're going to add to the shopping list. Okay, now at the bottom right hand corner, you can see we're actually going to end up making some money out of this transaction. Our final balance, even after our purchases, will be 31,175 credits. And you notice right below this, not enough resources on the station, order may take a long time. That's for whole parts. We're not actually purchasing any whole parts here. We only purchased some software and sold some consumables, but normally you would want to pay very close attention to this and probably cancel out of this order because you have no idea how long it's going to take for a trader to bring this by unless you uh, personally plan on or one of your ships bringing that by. So for now, we're going to go ahead and confirm this order. This brings us back out to the dock interactions and then we are going to exit out and we're going to walk over to our ship. So now we've done um, a few changes to our ship or at least they're underway right now. So what I want to do is I'm actually going to press M because we want to make some adjustments. We want to change the color scheme uh, as well as this logo that is on our ship. So I'm going to press the M key and then I'm going to come in under player information. Okay, under player information, the first thing is the logo. Now you can change the name. Uh, unfortunately for me, it continues to change it right back to uh, the Val Selton uh, default. But you can try to change that. Maybe it's just a glitch in the game currently. But when we come under logo, you have the ability to add custom logos to the game. I've done so, so we're going to choose that one. And then your default ship skin. You have some different choices. If you watch over the right hand side of the screen, you can see the different colors uh, accents that come up while we're doing this. I'm going to actually use the green one, which is option number three. And then I'm going to simply escape out. And now you notice that we've got our new logo as well as the green highlights on the side of the ship. So that is exactly where I want to be. And I'm sure that mods are going to add a lot more options as time goes on. So the final two things I want to talk about uh, inside the station are a couple of icons that you're going to see quite a lot as these are uh, common to lots of the station. Now, as we've talked about, the upgrade or repair function is only available at a few select types of stations. But whenever you see this icon that we're looking at right here, we, that is for upgrades and repairs. The good news is you don't actually have to go to this storefront in order to do that. We can use the dock interactions, uh, interactions tab as we've done here for that. 
The other one that we want to pay close attention to, and you will see this as far as I know at every station, that is the shopping cart. This is where the trader is located, and that's where we're going to be headed next. All right, we're now just outside of the trader platform, and before we head in to see the trader, there are a couple of things I want to point out. First, if you should need to get to the other side, you see a lot of docking platforms on the opposite side of the station, and... If you need to get over there, the first thing you're going to need is an elevator, which are on each of the corners, and you can simply hop in an elevator. It will take you down to the bottom, and then you can see that you can make your way over to the other side, use the elevator to go back up on the opposite side. So uh, these areas, the repair areas, as well as the trader areas are in different locations on every station, so you may have to move around a little bit in order to get there. Okay, so as we come into the trader area, this is a very important area early on in the game because right over here to the left, we have our trader, and then over here to the right, we have a crafting bench. Now, the interesting thing about the crafting bench is that you notice currently we have no inventory items, so it doesn't show us anything that we're able to craft. The things that the options it gives you to craft are based on the inventory items that you possess. The good news is we can get inventory items from the trader. So we're going to ask her to show me your wares. And then we've got a whole list of things that we can actually purchase from her. But there are some things that we're looking for in order to make a first aid kit. This is a great way to make money early on in the game to get your stuff started in the right direction. Because ultimately, what we want to do is get busy building our empire. More ships, stations, and so on. So, bandages. We want all the bandages that we can afford, $2,500 for bandages, and then sedative. That's the other thing we need. Now, you can purchase any of these things and then try to sell them for a higher price at another uh, vendor, another trader, but these are the ones I've simply had the best options with. Okay, so let's go ahead and confirm this. We're going to spend uh, a little over 10,600 credits. We're going to confirm that and then click on goodbye. Now we come back over to the crafting bench and you can see we have one option available to craft, but you see we're missing one material. The first aid kit, we need to find needles. So my experience is you don't find all three of these items in the same station. You usually will find one or two of them. Uh, so what I do is... As long as I have the credits, I try to purchase all of these three that they have available, even if I know I'm not going to be able to craft any first eight kits at that particular moment. So right now we need to still find needles, but if we take a quick look at the return on investment for this, our profit margin is huge with first eight kits. Now, they might change this later on with an update to the game, but for right now it is a huge profit margin. You're looking at somewhere around a thousand credits. Uh, could be more, could be less, depending on the individual pricing you find at stations. But we're going to spend about a thousand credits per first aid kit. But we're going to get back ten thousand five hundred again, or more. I've gotten over eleven thousand sometimes for these. So it is a ten or eleven to one ratio that you're going to be looking at cost to profit. A huge profit margin there. So I highly recommend every time you visit a station, come and see the trader and pick up any of those three pieces uh, in order to make first aid kits. All right, now that we are outside of the station itself, before we set off uh, to do some exploring, and we'll pull up the map real quickly and see that we only know about this small area of our initial starting sector. So there's a lot of area in here to explore and find other stations, other ships, maybe even other factions that are roaming around in here. So you'll especially want to be on the lookout for any red ships that show up on here. Those are enemy ships. Uh, so you'll be very aware and probably early on in the game, you'll want to stay away from those um, as they could destroy your ship. But before you think about exploring, consider actually flying around uh, the stations and trying to unlock as much information. You can see I flied around a little bit and got up to 44%. You, 
using the short range scanner uh, mode and shift two, I believe is the default for this. I've actually changed it to F2 on my system because it's a little easier for me to do that rather than having to hit the shift button every time. So as you fly around, you're going to unlock the different modules, which will make them available for you to build these later on in the game. But as we fly around, we're looking and listening because what we're looking for are sort of red sparkling uh, orbs or red sparklers. And whenever you see those, those are either a mission or a data leak. Either one of those are good for us. In fact, I see one right over there. So we'll make our way over in that direction. Also, you're looking for a red sparkling orb, uh, which will look very similar to this. In fact, this might be one as we get closer. All right, you can see very easily. And now you get to hear what comes along with it. There is a static, like an open comm channel. And as you get closer to it, if you've not seen it yet, as you get closer to it, it will get louder. So this is actually one of the mission orbs. And if we close right in on top of that and then keep still, we will actually get a transmission from someone who is offering us a job. So that is perfect right there. That's what you're looking for as you fly around. And you'll see something very similar to that for data leaks as well. So that's what you're looking for as you fly around the station. The final thing I want to talk about in today's Getting Started video is the idea of faction reputation. If you look in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see that currently with the Argon Federation, we are neutral and have a faction rating of zero. We want to increase this as much as we possibly can. And a very easy way of doing this is simply by taking out criminals that are in and around the station. So as you get close to the station and if you're flying around and scanning the different parts of the station, you'll notice that there's a lot of traffic in and around these stations. Uh, most of the traffic is normal AI traffic that will have uh, no borders around them, no icons surrounding them. There you see a blue one actually in uh, the distance. Most of those are traders or miners uh, that you'll see flying around, but every once in a while you will see one that is highlighted in red with a red border around them. That is significant because it means they are a criminal and the police are trying to catch them. A lot of times you will find these by hearing uh, the police chatter over the, uh, over the comm system. So again, all of this traffic is perfectly fine. If we happen to see one that was outlined in red, that is a criminal, and we are free to attack them and destroy them. Make sure whenever you're doing that, however, that you don't hit the station itself or any of the other traffic because that will ruin your reputation with the faction. So if you find a criminal and... Uh, usually, if you fly around the, the station for a few minutes while you're scanning, then you'll at least find uh, one, sometimes two, uh, in the area. And they are a great source of 500 credits for your trouble, as well as increasing your faction reputation. So that's going to do it for today's video. Thank you very much for joining me. Hopefully, you have found uh, a few pieces of information that will make the game a little bit more fun for you. So again, thank you very much for joining me and stay tuned as we will continue our coverage of X4 Foundations.